So this is a Swift Challenger 580, gonna take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, you've got the jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake, and the lead to connect to the car. We'll take you through this in person here on site. Front locker, you've got your gas bottle with gas valve on and off on top of the gas bottle itself, and your gas regulator up in the bulkhead. Uh, maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles is the is the amount of gas you can carry on board this van. And it does have to be in six kilo bottles as a maximum size rather than a bigger 12 kilo bottle. On this side of the van at the front, you have your wind down stabilizing legs. They are not there for lifting the caravan. If you lifted the caravan with these legs, it could potentially damage the floor of the caravan. You've then got your Audi heating and hot water flue above that. Um, that and you never cover this up, it's essentially there for the gas system on the heating and hot water system to allow it to vent to outside of the caravan. Then got your water pump connection, you pull back the blue trigger and push into the side of the van and release the tag to lock it in place and pull back the blue trigger and pull back to release it from the side of the van. The pump end will drop into the act roll itself. Then got your battery, uh, onboard leisure battery and your mains power lead coming into the side of the caravan uh, for your connection to the mains power on site. You've then got your fridge vent to allow hot air at the back of the fridge unit. The top on the top on the top one on the right hand side, you'll actually notice there's a gas vent there. The reason for that is because the fridge also runs on gas, and I'll explain that when we go inside the caravan. Motor mover and wheel nuts. The motor mover will be demonstrated here on site, and we'll also talk the wheel nuts to the correct manufacturer's setting before the caravan leaves site. Grey waste flaps coming out the side of the van. So on the side of the van, uh, you've got your grey waste pipes down the side here. Them grey waste pipes are essentially for the fresh water that goes in the front of the van to come out the side of the van. And you'll have two bits of grey pipe that push into them fitments uh, to allow the grey water to come out of the van. At the back of the van, you have your toilet flush tank, which takes three and a half litres of water prior to use, and a cap full of the pink fluid. In the bottom, you have your toilet waste cassette, which you pull up the orange handle to release it from the side of the van. You have a neck that turns out that allows you to tip the waste away and you have an orange pressure relief button on the back of the cassette. On the back of the van on either side you have your wind down legs again. As I said you never lift the caravan with these wind down legs, they are just there for stabilising the caravan rather than lifting. On this side of the van you have your storage locker for underneath the bed at the rear. You have your 230 electric point coming out of the van so you can have power coming into your awning. Storage locker underneath the bed and a barbecue gas point and your other wind down leg for the front of the van. Going inside the van, hasn't been cleaned yet, our uh, cleaning team is still coming in, got to come in here yet. To turn the power on, you've got your power above the door, so you turn the power on. You'll have a light on the power post and a light on the caravan to let you know the power is connected to the two. If you're connected to the car, you'll have a green lo uh, a light flashing on the car and a light on the caravan. Leisure battery voltage on the left hand side, you can also press the view levels for that to come up. The same as if you connect to the car, you can see how much power has been put through to the caravan from the car through the 12 volt supply from the vehicle. To fill the water system, first of all you're going to need to come underneath the seat on the front right hand side of the van. You're going to need to make sure the yellow drain down valve is parallel with the floor, as you can see it is at the moment. That yellow valve is essentially the drain down valve for the water system on board the van. If that valve is parallel with the floor, it'll allow you to fill the water system up and if it's upright towards the bottom of the seat it'll drain all of the water off the system on board the van. We do recommend that you drain all water off the caravan after every use of the van. So with that parallel with the floor you can open up all the drain, all the taps which you'll notice that have already been bled. So there's taps open and essentially with all them taps open so that'll be the tap in the kitchen, the ta taps in the bathroom also you can then start filling the water system. The reason you leave them open is, is we need to get the air out of the system. Once they're open, you'll come to this control panel above the door again, press the water pump switch, and it will start filling the system up. Once the system's full, you'll have water running out of every tap on board the caravan continuously, as you can see here. At that point, you'll shut all of the taps off. Once that system's full, you'll then be able to start thinking about warming the water on board the caravan. So as you can see, 30.5 degrees and the heating isn't even on today inside the van. You'll see on the control panel here is letting me know we've got mains power coming in and the heating and hot water pump is running. Oh, we are turned right up to 30 degrees. It shouldn't be, but there we go. We'll turn that down. So, top button here is for the internal room temperature. As you can see, I'm just turning it down at the moment. 
obviously minus to turn it down, plus to turn it up. Very simple to use. Essentially the heating is off when it's at five degrees. Below that you've got your hot water. So you've got hot water on where this bar is half full. And you've got hot water boost when this bar is completely full. So like I said, off when it's empty, on when it's halfway up, and boost when that bar is full. Below that you've got the amount of electric you're drawing into the caravan from the site you're on. So you've got uh, electric off going to your heating and hot water. One kilowatt power coming into the van, two kilowatts and three kilowatts. Now depending on what site you're on, it will depend on what you set this to and you'll only know when you ask the site office when you arrive on site. If you're off grid and you've got no electric coming into the caravan, then you'll use the gas option just here. As long as the gas is turned on in the front locker, it will essentially self ignite on gas um, and if it fails to ignite, it will come up with gas failure at the bottom of the screen with two exclamation marks at either end here. If it does ever do that and the gas is turned on, I advise you go over to the hob um, or the grill or oven and ignite the hob and grill to get the gas through as that is the last point on the gas system. There is some options in here. We do advise for the options on board this particular van that you read the manual that comes with the caravan. If I try to explain all the options in, uh, in this video, the video would take around two to three hours. To operate the fridge, it's very simple to do. You've got mains power off, or got power off on the left hand button here. You've got power on. You've got gas operation where it will self ignite on gas as long as the gas is turned on. If it fails to ignite, as you'll see at the moment, it's flashing the blue flame symbol here and the red warning light on the other end to let me know it has failed to ignite. 240 volt will run off the 240 mains, as I'm sure you're probably aware from the, the power on site. And again, on sorry, on mains or gas, you can control the temperature of the fridge on the button on the right hand side here. To operate the fridge from 12 volt supply while you're towing down the road, so essentially when you connect to the car, you can use the fridge as a cool box. So when you get on site, the beers and wine are nice and cold. Um, you connect up to the car first, come inside, turn the fridge on, and then select. Uh, once you connect up to the car, turn the fridge on and then select the 12 volt mode just here. At that point the temperature switch here is completely redundant as it doesn't actually uh, work as a fridge like I said it is just a cool box. Hmm. Maybe a bit noisy down the back of the van because we're actually washing the car on the outside. To operate the toilet system on board the van, you will use the electric flush on top of the toilet to flush the toilet. You've got your toilet full indicator light. This light here will illuminate red when the toilet waste cassette is full underneath the van. You then have your toilet handle here, the toilet handle, waste handle here. When it's open, will allow the toilet waste into the van and the cassette underneath the van. Um, when the toilet cassette is pointing straight across the caravan towards the shower unit, it will allow you to release the cassette from underneath the van or on the outside of the van. However, if the toilet is turned as it is at the moment, it will actually lock the cassette in place. The reason for this is it does we don't or the caravan builders don't want you to have a problem where you pull the cassette out and somebody's actually using the loo on board the van. The bed in the rear of the van actually lifts up so you've got storage underneath, as you can see. Like I said, the van hasn't been cleaned yet, so bear with us on that side of it. But the bed and bed storage is very accessible, as I said, from the outside or the inside of the van. If you have any further questions on the Swift Challenger, please do give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'll be more than happy to help. Uh, we appreciate your business and like I said, we look forward to seeing you here on site for your handover. So thank you for now and bye-bye.